There's a wide variety of quality when it comes to video games, and chances are you're going to have more fun playing a high quality game than a lower quality one. But how much you enjoy a game has another important component that I discovered after replaying Super Mario Odyssey, and that is the player's mindset. But before I get to that, I need to give you some context. I was in 8th grade when Super Mario Odyssey was released, and like most Nintendo fans, I was beyond hyped. So I told my parents about how I really wanted this game and how life-changing it would be for me to receive it. And we made a deal. And that deal was, if I kept my grades high enough, they'd buy the game for me. So I accepted the deal, and because of that, I developed the habit of getting most of my satisfaction from completing stuff, since completing school assignments was generally good for my grades. Unfortunately, this habit bled into other areas of my life besides school, and one of the affected areas was gaming. By the end of that school year, I met my end of the deal, and my parents met theirs. But when I first played Super Mario Odyssey, I had a pure completionist mindset. And before I knew it, with the help of guides because I was a chump who was just that dedicated to completion, I had every moon in the game. But this thing I had been looking forward to for so long didn't feel fulfilling to me. But sadly, I decided to place the blame on the game rather than myself. I continued playing games like this for years, and I eventually realized that video games just weren't fun anymore to me. So I began the question why I even played games. Maybe I was just getting too old, or I was playing the wrong games, or maybe I was just too busy with high school and its activities to spend time enjoying video games. But then I realized that I wasn't having fun because I was preoccupied with being productive whenever I played a game. I played games like they were a chore or a job, rather than escaping from all of that and immersing myself into a new world. Eventually, I decided to go back to Super Mario Odyssey and give it a second chance. But instead of trying to play for efficiency, I played for entertainment this time. Super Mario Odyssey is about fun, not difficulty. It's like junk food, rather than some fancy meal that people would say is an acquired taste. You don't have to work very hard to find enjoyment in it. Rather than thinking of the moons as some sort of oversaturated, collectible milestone, I thought of them more as waypoints that gently guide you around the game's worlds. And thanks to the game's extremely smooth controls, traveling never feels like a slog. Now one thing I didn't like when I first played Super Mario Odyssey was that I felt like the controls weren't used to the fullest. Most of the moons didn't really require any sort of complex input, most of them were just kind of out in the open for Mario to grab when he gets there. Even though now I praise Super Mario Odyssey's moons for being easy to collect, I would have liked to see some of the post-game moons do more with Mario's incredible flexibility. But now this is only a minor complaint, and it doesn't really detract from the game's overall quality. Another thing that Super Mario Odyssey does really well is its pacing. You're never in one place for too long. Even the game's largest kingdoms like the Sand Kingdom or Metro Kingdom can be finished within 30 minutes and much less on subsequent playthroughs. Each kingdom has its own culture, and it feels like a place where inhabitants could actually live a life rather than just kind of standing around saying they do. And because you have a choice in which moons you can collect to progress in the game, you never really get stuck in a kingdom. If you're struggling with a certain moon, then you can just go find a different one. And even then, most players won't find themselves struggling on most of the moons in this game, because most of them are not very difficult. And of course, the game is beautiful, and even though it was released in the Switch's launch year, it is still, to this date, one of the best looking games on the Switch. It really is an impressive showcase of what the Switch could do, and it's part of the reason why I was so excited about the Switch when it was new. It somehow manages to seamlessly blend semi-realistic environments with Mario's typical cartoony look, without it looking too awkward or shoehorned in. And the game's main gimmick, being the capturing mechanic, is an unobtrusive replacement for power-ups that myself and likely some other people were getting tired of in previous Mario games. They managed to introduce a new gameplay mechanic and build upon it in almost every kingdom, and each time they introduce a new capture, it never feels rehashed from an old one. And overall, Super Mario Odyssey is just a very relaxing and low-stakes game. I felt pretty much no stress playing this game both times. My main takeaway from Super Mario Odyssey was that it's an odyssey, not a gauntlet. It's in the name. Even though completing things in video games is satisfying, especially in more difficult games, at the end of the day, the most important thing is that you had fun. And since Super Mario Odyssey is such a laid-back and easy-going game to play through, it's easy to just focus on the present and enjoy yourself while you're playing it. Even though the Super Mario Galaxy games still have the number one spot in my heart, Super Mario Odyssey helped me enjoy my favorite hobby again. And because of that, it is a very important game to me, and I'm glad that I gave it a second chance.